What's good? What's good? We are back. Another live for Fed Nine Friday. I'm the one and only Paul Masson, and I'm joined by Mr. J. How you doing, Mr. J? All right. All right. All right. Everything good over there? You, you text me like you, you said you had a, some issues at first. Yeah, man. You know. Uh, connection? Yeah, connection. Things slowing down over here. Probably, you know, weather related. You know. Yeah, it has been raining all day, yeah. man. We, we're getting this sorry North Carolina weather all day. Well, we got a guest waiting. We're going to bring on our guest for the day. Um, straight producer extraordinaire, the one and only kid called Quest who's been waiting for us. Here we go. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Kid called Quest. How you doing, man? Cooling, man. How's everything? Let's get you up on the big screen here. Doing good, good, man. Appreciate you coming on and doing this. Or no doubt. Thanks for the opportunity. No doubt. Let's go ahead and jump into it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just kind of give everybody a rundown about yourself so we can kind of, you know, uh, get everybody familiar with who you are and what you do and who you've been involved with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I go by the name Kid Call Quest, Rochester, New York. Um, I started it back in started making beats back in 2000, 2001. Uh, my first series project was a beat tape that I put out that I wasn't expecting to take off the way it did. It was called uh, J Quest vs. Knife Wonder. That was in 2005. Um, like I said, that was just a tape. It wasn't even my, it was my brother idea originally. He had a plan on doing something with him versus Kanye, but he just sat on the idea. So I told him, I'm gonna roll that idea that he has, just, just mess around man. Got some knife one instrumentals, some my instrumentals, put them together, and I pressed up some CDs. And next thing I know, people were all over legging them and my name all over the place. I had a higher demand than the actual beats I actually had in my hard drive. Or not at the hard drive, um, actually had in my archive at the time, my floppy disk and everything. And then um though went from later on, I uh, moved up and uh switched my name up from J Quest to Kid Call Quest, because you had um, a couple other J Quests, two of my new of uh, already. Uh, one was from Boston, and the other one was from was that um, was that Jersey? He was going by the name Johnny Quest or something like that. And then there was a third J Quest. I had no idea about who was taking credit for all the stuff that I was doing, and was just doing a bunch of dumb shit. And people was getting me and him mixed up, and bridges getting messed up and burnt for no reason. I'm trying to figure out like what I do, but that made me change my name, and um, I had to keep the name Quest because. Everybody knew me by, they knew the Quest part. Everybody's always calling me Quest. So I like, I got to pick a name that I know nobody won't try to bite. And the idea hit me, kid called Quest. I like, I know I'm going to take a lot of slack for this for a minute, but once I started getting the work built up and people started getting familiar with the name and stuff, and sure enough, you know, I was getting a lot of, I was getting, it was, I was getting a lot of backlashes for the name, but eventually people started catching on to the name and everything. And that's, that part smoothed out. And then I started on, um, say, around 2008. 2009, I started putting together my own compilation albums outside of instrumentals, and that's what really started taking, helping me take off and getting more recognition on um, websites during that time period, like the um, the Kevin Nottingham's, the HipHopGames.com, and all the all the popping hip hop sites during them times. Uh, so, you know, what kind of equipment do you use? You know, that's that's kind of. A question for uh, Trill, Trill, who, who isn't here right now, but uh, um, I always been an MPC head. Um, my very first actual piece of gear that I used was an old Casio keyboard, and uh, like I always tell everybody every story, uh, every time I bring the story up, like I learned how to make beats by accident. Like it was, it wasn't something that I, oh, I, I want, I gotta get it. I, I really gotta get. It. I actually started out doing, I did it by accident from being bored and sitting in the basement and my brother had a keyboard sitting and just playing our melodies and stuff just to pass by to pass up time and next thing you know i'm sitting there making my own melodies and stuff you know during that time early 2000, you know i was trying to mimic the swiss beats and the timberlands and all that but um my first real sampler was actually in a kai s20 that's like a generic version of the npc 1000 without a metronome so however long you want your beat to play that's how long you had to actually hit the drum pads and the sounds and stuff and if you messed up, you had to go back and start all over again. And then my brother, he had, had ended up getting a 2000 XL. And I remember uh, this was going into 2000, was it 2002, 2003. I know I was still, I was just 
and going into high school, but um, every chance that I got, my man Devine, he actually, go, I'm kind of skipping it, but my man Devine, he had a he had a regular 2000. He was teaching me how to use the regular 2000. And once I got familiar with the regular 2000, my brother had the XL and the functions were still kind of the same. Like, And once I learned that, I was, I was hooked on to NPC ever since. And um, I'd say my first software, production software gear would be, would have been the machine because that was the closest to the MP I thought that you would get. But as you can see, I'm back on the MP. Oh, you got some questions for him? Oh, that's all you had? Well, I got some other questions, so I'll let you get yeah, in. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I <laughs> thought you had more than that. All right, so I was checking out a record. You had um, Relate featuring Jazzo. Pretty Bully, Curtis Cope, uh, Ken C. I know you had a couple records with the Ken C. Cat. How did Jazz O end up on that record? Do you know? Uh, yeah, um, I, I hit Jazz O up. We was building for a minute, actually. Cool dude, shout out to Jazz O. Uh, we was yeah, building. Yeah, up there, uh, Jazz O. We was, talking about, we was talking about gear, different gears and stuff, like how things have switched over the years and all that. I mean, we was like, we was just staying in contact, just building and building. And um, I actually had... Um, the relate joint was actually the sequel to Ken C's joint, Never Give You Up. And um, I had the idea where I wanted to do like a posse cut for a remix. And I thought about it. I got like, all right, I had Pretty Bully. She laid her verse down. Ken C already had a verse laid down. And my man Curtis Cope, he ended up hopping on it. And I was like, yo, we got to get one more person because it's an age gap between all the artists. Everybody has a different era that they own, that they're spinning and representing. And I was like, dang, it'd be dope if we could get a legendary MC on there to do a verse off of the era they came up in. And that's when the idea hit me with Jazz Zone. I hit him and he was down for it. Yeah, I've actually dealt with Jazz O in the past. Really, really good dude. Um, who are some of the producers that you kind of look up to? Producers that I looked it up to. Um, I definitely would say the beat miners is definitely probably one of my number ones. High tech definitely. I always like the okay. high tech, high tech and the beat miners. Um, the beat miners always like the the hard hit and filthy drums, and the way that just the way they drums and the samples and that bass, the filters, and then high tech always like the way he chopped up his samples and played his keys over them. Then my second, my, or not my second, my third favorite producer, if I was to break it down, would probably be Risen. I always loved the, the vocal okay. samples and all that. And like I said, it had that, it kind of, all those producers had kind of had like a similar feel to me. Um, and then my fourth one, I had to say Primo. I remember Primo um, definitely, got, I, used, I used to always love how he was chopping up his samples and stuff and the sound effects. And then Dr. Dre. For somebody, it's just the way his joint, his snares hit, just some crispy popping snares. But Are I, you familiar I, I, with uh, the Mood Doom album? The which one? The Mood Doom album. I heard of it, but I never yeah. really sat down and listened to it like that. Check it out. It's it's high tech's first work, man, and it's really, really great, man. Really, really great sound on there. It's like a futuristic. Oh, you talking about um, you talking about mood? Yeah, mood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got a futuristic, esoteric kind of sound going on there. Now, I was checking out your band camp. Um, do you think that um, not enough artists are focusing on the band cap, the band camps? Definitely. I, that was something that was something I was lacking. Um, I ain't gonna front. I was lacking like a few years back until actually earlier back when I was just putting stuff on it. Because it, it was at the time when I started putting stuff on the internet at the time, I really didn't have to rely on it because we had undergroundhiphop.com where we could send our CDs and stuff to and they do the consignments. And Bandcamp was just secondhand. So that was like secondhand change. So if somebody bought something on it and went to the PayPal, they bought it. But it really wasn't no main focus. But now looking at it from how the streaming game is now, where all right, you putting all this money into getting a project made, getting mixed master, getting the artwork done, a promo, and they only give you like not even a full penny for a stream. So you barely breaking, I mean you barely breaking, you barely breaking it. You ain't even making nothing really if it if it ain't getting picked up really like that. And that's when it hit me. I'm like, yo, you know what? That's what Bandcamp really should be the main focus when it comes to the online music uh, distributing because you get your money up front and you got control over it and you can push it and you don't got to really worry about some of the sample um, issues and stuff, how 
um, some of the other um, streaming platforms, distributors be picking up on when you upload stuff. Yeah, yeah, they detect the samples and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, I say Bandcamp's definitely something. I think so. Bandcamp doesn't detect the samples. Nah. Wow, man, I'm glad you told me that because yeah. you know I got so many records that we couldn't release because of the samples. Yeah, Bandcamp, Bandcamp don't detect them. Uh, I remember on my man Jay Hustle when we did this project, The Reflections. Um, actually, if you listen to the Bandcamp version and listen to the actual iTunes or whatever version, the Spotify, they, they differ than the Bandcamp version. Okay. Um, I had a sample that I had in there, and um, they actually detected where the sample came from. And I'm sitting there like, what the, how the hell they do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they definitely do. So I had to go back and redo it. So I'm like, damn, I'm like, well, we had two different versions out there, but... Uh, I know SoundCloud started doing that now too with certain stuff. Uh, they detect your sample. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, hit they they flagged me a couple of times for a couple of skits that I did, and actually picked up the movie where the skit came from. I'm like, what the? F <laughs> <laughs> so there's, so to kind of piggyback off of off of two different things there, um, there's no conflict with releases when you release on something on on uh you know the the streaming and then release it on Bandcamp. They don't, yeah, they don't kind of ding you or anything for that. Yeah, and the crazy, I can't necessarily say all the streaming distributors are like that, but I know DistroKid is definitely like that. They're, they're detected. TuneCore, I never really heard nobody complain about it, but I'm pretty sure by now they probably got the same thing too. That same TuneCore yeah, detects them. TuneCore detects them too. Definitely. Yep. Oh, so yeah, they started, okay. And you know, I was basically asked because you know certain people release certain things and they release a project and. If they release it on certain streaming, you can't release it anywhere else. So, you know, you have to do a completely different version. And, so that's what I was asking, you know, that you and what you I'm release surprised a project here, you can release a project on, you know, on Bandcamp and do the same name. Basically. Yeah, it's crazy because it, it's, it's crazy because I'm, what I'm surprised with now, too, I just got accepted into AWOL. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that. Uh, yeah, no, AWOL. Yup. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, it's a it's a branch off of Sony, um, off of Sony Records. They okay, got okay. their own dis distributing thing, but the thing with them is like, it's not like how TuneCore and Digital Kid is. Like anybody, you can't just sign up for it. You got to get accepted. And the crazy thing, more, um, exclusive, the, more exclusive. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, um, I had uploaded on uh, me and my brother on um, latest project, the Musical Karma, and I thought they was gonna flag me all day for the sample because it's number movie. The way the ideal is, is number of movie skits telling a story all through over the instrumentals and all that. But they got the thing under there that says they won't flag you for samples, but it's up it, pretty much you're at your own risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Other people will come for you. <laughs> yeah, other people could possibly come for well, you. That's but, probably how yeah. it is with Bandcamp then, because I mean, if you sell, you know, a million records on Bandcamp with a sample, I'm pretty sure that's going to catch up with you eventually. Possibly. I think yeah. the, the, the threshold is. Is at least a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand before somebody kind of comes and starts looking. Yeah, yeah, if you ain't you ain't making no money, it'd be I mean, they're wasting everybody's time coming after you. All they could do is try to say take it down, and that's about it. Yeah, and I had that not with Bad Camp, but it was a remix project that I did um a while back back in uh 2012. I mean I did a little remix project and I mean I, I barely pushed it barely got it wasn't even being sold it was being downloaded for free but uh it only got like 300 downloads and they was tripping about that <laughs> but yeah that's why i was like nah I'd, I'd rather just keep everything try to keep as much focus on the band camp really on the digital side than everything else definitely definitely um as far as the like the splits um we were talking kind of kind of talking around the the financial part of it uh, as far as like the splits with different artists, how do you how do you decide how you want to work that out? Like if you're doing always, a... I always be telling the artists get their BMIs and their ASCAPs um situated, so that way we can have everything properly registered. So something happens to get picked up or sold or whatnot, you at least you get some back end off of it. Um, I know Distro Kid and TuneCore they do the splits where they set it up for you. Um, AWOL, I'm trying to see how that's going to work out because, like I said, everybody can't get accepted to it. But um, I think the splits is the only thing Bandcamp is missing. And I think once Bandcamp, once somebody over at Bandcamp 
finally you start thinking and incorporate that, Bandcamp will take over. I think it'll easily take over. And that's the only thing that's separating it from the other the other guys is some splits. Mm. Well, you know, the biggest problem with streaming is not just the payouts. It's the fact that you can't really engage with fans on streaming. Like they can't comment on those songs. You can't reply to comments. There is no direct messaging, you know, and I think on Bandcamp, you could direct message your your fans that subscribe, right? Yeah. So you got the email, you got the email, you know, thing built into that. And that's another thing. Artists, the, m- most artists don't have an email database of fans whatsoever. And it's crazy because, like, if you got Bandcamp, Bandcamp will break that all down for you and give you those emails. Like, I got over 800 emails from people that download and bought stuff over the years. And I just recently found out about that when I signed up. For, well, you got to have Bandcamp Pro. But that's okay. I found out about yeah. that when I signed up for Bandcamp Pro. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> so, like, right now, I could, what I wish I would have did, I wasn't thinking, I could still do it. Cause you guys about to post this up anyway. I can always take the little fly promo flyer and I can go directly into my band camp. As long as y'all let me know what the date is that it actually aired, and I can send the link with the actual promo flyer to everybody in the band camp and they can actually click the link and check it. Okay. That's the dope thing about it. You had another question for him, Jay? Because I got another one. Well, basically, who who's some people that you um have have worked with overall like production overall i work with so many somebody just asked me this question the other day and i didn't realize like it's been so much like um big shout out to my man big shook from the gangstar foundation that was actually my first um big, my first, um, big placement um the other side of the game and i ended up doing half of his other um uh, two albums after that i am forever and um I am forever and all uh, damn what's the other the other one after that called the um damn I can't think of the name right now but I did half of those two albums and I had a couple of joints on the one the, the last one he just dropped and I had to did a single joint but um yeah big shit was definitely one um when I started doing my compilations I started working with artists like Craig G for the juice crew um I had had on um, black poet I was that's actually, another was that's another gangstar affiliate screwballs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Black Poet, big shout out to Black Poet. Um, and rest in peace to uh one of their members. Um, what is it? Hostile, I think, passed away. You no, know, hostile just passed away. I think it's just is it hostile? I believe KLC passed too. I think it's only two members left. Yeah, we've been trying to reach out to him. We actually been in talks a little dap trying to set up an interview with him, hopefully in September as well um but again yeah, um i remember my man shout out my man tone for zoos he had um he had let me produce a joint that he did with keith murray uh back in 07 08 it was called uh rough enough oh uh, that was featuring arston from terminology crew st dot squad um who else man um jay hood that used to be formal uh used to be with the d used to be with d block back in the day D-block, yeah yeah. I forgot about him. I'm glad you brought him up. I forgot all about Jay Hood. Yeah, hey, uh, Jay Hood, uh, rapper Big Poof, little brother. We did a joint together for uh, mm-hmm. off of my put your headphones on. Uh, who else was on there, man? Um, yeah, rapper Big Poof. Um, going into the second project and other albums that I had placements on. Uh, shout to Rex, big shout to Rex. Sky yeah, Zoo. shout out to Rex, friend yeah, of the show. Rex, yeah. uh, Rex Sky Zoo. Um, shoot, man, there's it so many people, man. Sky Zoo is mad dope, too. That's another one yeah. that gets slept on. Yeah, Sky, yeah, people, yeah. Now, you, how you did know, you end up working on um two of Big Suge's albums? You know, it's a crazy story because, like, you know how people always complain about, like, this is the MySpace era, though. But remember how people used to always complain about people spamming and flooding the boards and all that? And yeah, sitting out yeah. Getting a message. I happen to be one of them people, and I always, I always strongly believe, like, yo. Me too. Me too. And the thing is, it's, it's crazy right now because it's crazy right now because people to this day still cry about, yo, why people spamming? Like, like, bruh, 
what we're doing is no different than what these movie companies be doing on our TVs when they put these commercials every five minutes when you're in the middle of watching a good show. I like if you're yeah. doing music, whatever you're doing, whether you're a cook, whatever, you got to get your word out to people so people will know. One post here, one post there is not going to cut it. <laughs> no different than a telemarketer. Yeah, no different. Somebody calling you 100 times a day. I mean, you're going to, because eventually what happened is you're going to see that post or that, that commercial ad or whatever 100 times. Now it's stuck in your head because now you're familiar with it. Now you're going to check it. And that's the same thing we were doing. And people used to always talk junk like, oh, 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 oh. But I, and I always tell people like, yo, be honest with you. Me doing that got me play, got me a placement I wasn't even trying to get. <laughs> mm. And dudes be sitting there wondering like, why ain't they music getting heard or picked up? Like you got to do that because you never know. And especially if it's a complete stranger. You don't know who is who and who got connects for who. And that happened to be what happened with the big ship placement. Um, shout out to Justin Bailey from uh, Smokehouse, Smoke City Records. Um, Cause I ended up sending him a link to uh, the Knife Wonder joint actually. And he hit me back like a couple weeks later. He's like, yo, send some beats. He said, I work with a couple artists. And he said, I know um, they look, they looking for a lot of beats and your stuff, they style. So kind of find out those two artists was um, Big Suge and Sean Price. And it was one more dude that was out there in that time. Damn, I can't think, was it Poison Pen? No, not Poison, no, this dude was from Boston too. I think it was Slang. It might have been slang, but um, I sent him some. I emailed him some beats. This back dial up, you know. He <laughs> would used to take forever to send stuff out, and I sent him like <laughs> six, twelve beats. It took like almost a whole day to upload those, but I got to send those to him, and I didn't hear nothing back from him for like about three, four months. And he hit me out the blue. He's like, "Yo, you just got an album placement. I wanted the artist I'm working with, but he ain't tell me exactly which artist it was." And then three more months after that, once it was everything was confirmed. He's like, yeah, you got a place on our big Shig new album, Other Side of the Game, is coming out pretty soon. I was like, oh, word, that's dope. And um, that's how I, um, that he actually the one that taught me, that told me about the ass caps and everything. He said, um, get your ass cap and everything um, situated because, you know, you got to make sure everything's properly registered and all that. And I ended up talking with this one dude who's, who's worked with all the artists at the time. Um, what was his name? Uh, Dan Green. Um, dude named Dan Green, he because he's working like with AZ and all them at the time. I think I've Beach. heard, yeah, I think I know Dan Green. Hey, um, I, I kind of talked a little bit with him because he, he was working with a producer at the time called Lee Bannon that was getting a lot of placements and a lot of stuff. But, um, that's how I got my first placement just sitting there promoting, clicking, see a stranger who's in the music. Hey, check this out, bam, bam. So you heard it from Kid Call Quest. Spamming does work because they forget we're going off of this two to three percent rule. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, after you spam so many people, a percentage of people are gonna click it. Especially, it ain't really spam if if you got something they need or you got something they want. You know. And the crazy thing, right? And this is the thing too. People fail to realize too. Like, all right, they're complaining about the spamming, but now, like, especially if you use a Facebook. Now people who's complaining about spamming now all of a sudden are now starting to use the highlights and the follow the app yeah. follow the highlight and now and that's and the worst. Know. That's the worst actually. I'm i I've stopped doing that because I'm tired of people doing it to me. It's like you got five people mentioned you at once. It's like damn dude, I can't go to all y'all at once. And the thing a lot of people don't understand how you could get around that too to get it actually target the people. Like what I do is I got three, four different pages, and most of those mm. pages, the majority of them pages got people from different regions. So if I okay. got one post I'm trying to promote, I go to my other page and go to that main page that I'll be on, and I add follow at them. So all those people get hip to that and check all that post, check them posts out on that one page and keep everything going. But that's what they're trying to do now. They said you like if you got thousand, five thousand followers, only three hundred of them people are seeing your posts. <laughs> All right, we're about to get to a quick commercial break, and we're coming right back. Tropical drink. Are we drinking? Me and my team will never be link up. They're going to be drink up. We sit on our relax and have two glasses when there's things to think about. Like I'm nice with the boss when I tend to the boss and I'm not talking drink up. So tell the bartender that's tend to the bar please pass me a big cup of. And tell the waitress that's waiting on us to put a little ice in it. Now watch the ice become weightless like the spaceships that I be sitting in. No waiting list, another waiting for that tropical twist. That'll take a taste buds. Now taste up. Now I insist it's the drizzle.
That's right. You could Dizzle too. Go to DizzleBrand.com to get your very own bottle of bottles. And you heard the great Chip Fu right there. He Dizzles too. We back. Um, did you have another question, man? It- yeah. Um, <clears throat> following along that line of uh, people you work with, um, anybody else you you were really looking forward to working with or that you had? That was going to be my next question. Or just people somebody are- you wanted to work with? Somebody I always wanted to work with, I always wanted to do something with Ghostface. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, shout out to um Tripe Diesel. Um Tripe to God, big shout out to him. Um who else, man? I always wanted to do something with AZ. Definitely want to do something with um I definitely wouldn't mind doing a joint uh with um with um damn why I can't think of people's names. Um, damn. There's so many people I, I want to work with and do stuff with, but um, definitely Rick Ross, definitely be one. Um, Rick Ross. Um, shoot. Um, did I say um? Shoot, Pat Poos, definitely. He definitely one. It's it's mad people, man. I can't even think about the top, but. It's a lot of people I would like to work with, do some joints with. And hopefully that happens pretty soon. Well, I heard your production, so you fit with all those cats you named, man. As long as you just keep getting your name out there, I'm pretty sure you're going to cross paths with all of those cats. Yeah, thanks, man. And let's get you out on this one. Um, as far as uh, the production, your production sound, um, what? how do you feel – about you know just the overall sound of what's going on right now, uh, what's being pushed commercially. Um, it's crazy right now. Um, I think what's going on right now is there's a lot of people that's lacking I- identity. Like that's the big problem right now. I can't necessarily say it's because people are now putting out their drum packs and all that and. It's just narrowing down. It's narrowing down the sound to just one specific sound, but I don't know. It seems like a lot of people's not putting that much. You got very few that put actual effort into the, and, and quality into the work that they make, and then you got a big majority of people that just go get a sound or whatever off the internet, loop it up, throw something, throw one or two things on it, and then push it and. Next thing you know, you got 150 beats that sound exactly the same. And you can't tell who did what. Definitely, definitely. I heard uh, um, one of the newer artists, 42 Doug, out of Detroit, basically saying it would usually take him maybe 30 minutes to try to get a few beats and, and, you know, get that together for his album. But he said it it took him almost two hours at this point uh, for his newest project because he felt like everybody was kind of doing the same thing. But um, any shout-outs, any, anything else you want to kind of talk about? Um, Big shout-out to DJ Chris G from Straight From the Underground. Uh, shout-out to Jerry Graham. Uh, big shout-out to my man Curtis Coke, DJ Sight. Uh, Pretty Bully. Shout-out to my man L. Biz. Dark Skin Jermaine from the Backpack Mafia. Shout-out to my man Azariah. Jay Hustle uh, for the Young Black and Gifted team. Uh, big shout out to Big Shug. Shout out to my man um, DJ Joe Cool from Beat Miners Radio. Um, shoot, man. Shout out to everybody. I got one more quick question before you go. What's your feeling about, it kind of relates to what y'all was just talking about, like uh, why the beats uh, all sound the same. What's your feeling about like three or four people making one beat? That was that's too many people on one beat. <laughs> yeah. I would, like the Justice League, they was gonna pull it off because you know that at the during that time, that was something different. It was like an actual production, like there's like a band, like kind of you think about it. But like now it's crazy now because like we was just saying, like four people nowadays being on doing the beat, it's like okay, who's actually really coming with their own identity though with it? Because, you know, you go back and look at the Justice League stuff, everybody had a specific sound or had a specific way they did certain things. So the person that did the drums, did they stuff a certain way? 
person that's doing the samples might do the things a certain way, or if they all specifically made the skeleton of the beat, everybody bought their own flavor to the table to complete the rest of the beat. And it's like now, like we was just saying, like everybody got the same sounds and everything. And it's like, how many people are actually sitting there? I, I got this looped up. Okay, I'm about to come and loop this up. Oh, I'm going to add this on there. It's like, okay, you can do that by yourself. One person can actually do all that by themselves. Yeah, and it's, I hate it, it, it makes no like, sense. Yeah. And then you don't know who did what. <laughs> and then everybody probably want to take credit for making that beat themselves. Yeah. And then it's like, it's not like how it was. Like, like I said, like the Justice League, there's one of the only few that could actually get away with that because everybody had their own unique own style. And it's just like, like when you think about like Dr. Dre with Scott Scorchino, we all know Dr. Dre got some little drums. We know Scott Scorch is crazy on the keys. And we know what's his name is nice with the bass. Battle Cat and all. Them. And then, um, and, and uh, what's his name? Um, Daz. We all know that the dude's ill when it comes to samples and the bass and all that. But now, like I said, now that it's, oh, it's really, it's crazy. Like we were just saying, too, the way how the streaming thing is, you got four people trying to split a fraction of a penny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you got to hope that that joint actually takes off. Uh, tell me how that's that even man worse than out. just a rapper dropping the song. I mean, when you got three, four people that want to get paid off of that beat, that yeah, that's crazy. And, and then depending on, like, I don't know if you guys uh, heard. I don't know. I was just reading about on um, the, the Cisco situation from back in the day with the Thor song with all the, everybody involved with that, the producers and all that. How all them dudes had to split that publishing. And he ended up getting sued by the guy that wrote the um uh, was that Ricky Martin that living on Via Loca, he ended mm-hmm. up getting sued by that actual songwriter for saying La Vida Loca. They consider that the fall in the samples, and the writer wow. I guess actually took like 85 percent of the publishing, and Cisco had to split the rights of the remaining publishing with everybody else involved with the production, and whoever else helped him write the song and whatnot. So it's like, dang, you got like probably like eight nine people trying to split. Fifteen percent. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. And they's actually talking about like, yo, we remember when our, our publishing checks was. The one dude was saying our publishing checks was like looking like this, and we started seeing by day like it go from here, starting to go down to here. On the outside, they make this business look so glamorous. Exactly. But when yeah. you get on the inside, it's so cutthroat. It's very it's cutthroat. so shady. Well, anything else you want to shout out before you go? Um, anybody, uh, for everybody that's tuning in, um, you can go to kidcallquest.bandcamp.com. Um, me and my brother DJ Site just released an instrumental project called The Musical Karma. Okay. Uh, you can, um, if you uh, pin out what plat- streaming platform you're using right now, you can just type in Kid Call Quest. Uh, you can check out Pretty Bully New Album, Then and Now, Can See um, Project, The Kendrick Cole EP. Uh, me and my man Azariah, we a group together of uh, Young Black and Gifted. Once again, that's on. That's out now, and pre- pretty much everything's on. If you want to uh, backtrack and check out any projects, and I'm definitely going to hit you up. Uh, we do the music reviews on Saturdays, so some of those artists we'd like to try to, you know, get some uh, new music from the review on the our Saturday shows as well. Oh, definitely, I'll let them know. Yeah, because definitely a lot of those artists will probably get yays on our show you know with uh you know we all kind of biased towards the the 90s era sound of hip-hop but you know it is what it is yeah matter of fact, i can see you a bunch of music too on the on review yeah we definitely appreciate that man i mean we definitely need more hip-hop because we got a ton of death metal rock country all these other genres but a, not as much hip-hop as we'd like to get for definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm uh, just send me the email to send it to uh, in the uh, messenger, and I get that over to you. Matter of fact, soon after we get off, I do that because that was me that replied to the one when you was talking about the stream yard, asked if we was doing stream yard. Okay, yeah, that was me to reply. So I'll re- I reply to you back on there and, and send you the, the email and whatnot. All right, cool. Well, man, we appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, man. We got to get off here and uh, debate this little topic. 
and whatnot. But uh, we're going as soon as I get off here, we're gonna clip up the interview too. Put out a bunch of clips, man, and um, till we run out of clips and whatnot. And you're a friend of the show, man. So if you ever want to come back on, just hit us up, man. Definitely, man. Appreciate. It. Appreciate you, man. And we definitely gonna make sure we chop. I gotta chop up the big sugar. Make sure we tag him in it. Okay. All right. Take it easy, right, man. man. Have a nice night, man. All right, you too, man. Enjoy your weekend. All right, peace. Peace. peace out. Really good dude, man. Nice dude right there. Um, yep. damn, I didn't know he did like two of Big Sugar's albums, like half of his albums and whatnot. You know, yeah. Big Sugar definitely being engaging with the content as well. Uh, I didn't see those topics that you sent to me, but I got something that I do want to discuss. All right. Eminem's album. Did you listen to any of it? Um, I've heard the two singles, one with him, you know, of course, the initial Houdini and the other one. Okay, so you heard the second single. What'd you think about that one? Second Toby single, joint. Toby, yeah. Um, that's definitely dope. Uh, um, I like that one, too. I like it better than the Houdini. Yeah, and I think that's the problem. Like, we were talking before, of course, it was the lead in. He kind of wanted to give people some nostalgia from his, you know, last last album, last Slim Shady album. And that's how he kind of starts things off with the kind of jokey stuff. But um I'm, I'm you know, we, we we people of a certain age, we kinda over that. So we kind of gravitate a little bit more to the joint like Toby. He's he's kind of keeping it current and giving you some of that classic lyricism too. So, you know, that's that's definitely dope. Um, John Jones tuned in. Appreciate you, Jones. Peace. Uh, I mean, I like the Toby joints better than Houdini, but I listen. I went through the album. I know why people, man. I know why people don't want to give Marshall's flowers, man. And and <laughs> I don't blame him, man. Like, okay, that some of the songs, there's you know some some Slim Shady in there. Here and there, you know, they sprinkling Slim Slim Shady here and Slim Shady there. Mm. But, man, it's still a mediocre album, man. It's still, it's like, I don't care if it fits with the times. I don't care if it's got some nostalgic in it. It's still a mediocre album, man. It, I, I understand why people feel like he shouldn't be where he is. You know why? Cause he shouldn't be, man. He's not even. I mean, I could think of a lot of white rappers, man, that are iller than Eminem. I could think of a lot, man. Ill Bill is one of them. Apathy's another. I'll take Rod the Rugged Man over him. I still gotta go with Everlast. I might even take Gore Tex, uh, Ill Bill's partner in crime. I mean, there's just Eminem's delivery isn't the sexiest sounding thing to me. His voice is very irritating. <clears throat> I think people just solely go off of the lyrics and the lyrics only, man. The production is mediocre at best. He hasn't had a great produced album to me since dr dre stopped producing all this stuff i think that was like really like what did it for me of like he's just not as great as to me his music is not as great as the sales reflect as the reaction reflects as i mean these people that go in and say it's trash and, and garbage, and most people be like, oh, they're just hating, they're hating. No, man, they're just telling the honest to God truth, dude. I hate to say I don't, it. I don't, know, I don't know if that's entirely. I mean, everybody's, it's all subjective anyway, but it's not as trash as everybody wants to believe it is, and it's not as great. Nobody hate, as nobody's hating Nathan Robinson. Go, go to sleep. It's past your bedtime. Go to sleep. <laughs> That's not as great as everybody. Eminem nowadays out, does not sound as good as Slim Shady sounded. After um, the second, the, the I mean, like Lose Yourself, that was an okay record. I'm not gonna lie, that was a good record. But 
Eminem is not the best white rapper, Nathan Robinson. You're not even old enough to have this conversation, man. Go to bed. Go drink some milk and some. Go get your milk and your cookies, man. Don't fucking call me a hater, man. When you don't fucking know me. Oh, nobody's crazy. hating. The music is not that good. It's. I'm sorry, man. I could. I, if I work on an album tomorrow, my shit is gonna be way better than that. I think a lot of. I will not work. stop it. Go to bed. <laughs> You calling me a fucking hater, talking about he, him, him, he the white, him, he the, the best white rapper. You can't even fucking spell, man. You can't even spell and you call me a hater. Go to bed, Nathan. No, I'm not hating. <laughs> the music is mediocre. It's average at best. Prove well, me wrong, good. man. It's got to be more than lose yourself. Gotta be more than lose yourself, but you know. I mean, so rap God was alright. Rap God was alright, but that was the only record that was alright on that album. I mean, Eminem does not put out these great albums, man. I don't care what anybody says, man. His his albums have been mediocre, average at best. A lot has to do with the production. That's why his Marshall rhyme Mathers schemes album, and patterns be the same. I think the Marshall Mathers album was was uh, one of the dope ones. I think. Um, what do you think Another about one. Central C Joe. and Ice Spice might be dating? I don't think about that one bit. Sorry. Central C and Spice. I don't think about, about that one bit. And guess what? I don't and and, and I'm not a hater because I don't think about it. It just doesn't fucking interest me. I'm not interested in who the fuck is dating who. I don't give a rat's ass what celebrity dates what celebrity, man. That's what groupies care about. I'm not a groupie. Talking about real music, man. We ain't talking about I am WWE a side show. WWE side show stuff. Thoughts about little TJ's music. Hey, uh, you know what? I like little TJ and Joyner Lucas record. I like the Joyner Lucas record and little TJ. But little TJ as a whole, I mean, he's all right, but he kind of fizzled out ever since he got shot. I mean, anything else you want to ask us, Nathan? <laughs> Back to Eminem. I mean, it's it's mediocre, man. It's average at best, man. I just don't get why so many people just clamor and run to M's dropping. We got to talk about it. I don't get it. Because he's, he's put in such high esteem, by, by, not just by people but by other mcs i mean man it, it might be because he's white nine. dude. they might be right man they might be right nah, it might be because nah, he's white nah, dude no 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 i'm not i'm not because it, it not can't be the that. music man it can't be the music i used to think that i used to think that it like yeah you know hey you can't i used to it used to piss me off when people would say that but now i'm starting if to that's, if like that's the case then vanilla the then vanilla ice is one of the greatest rappers ever but no, nah, as far nah, as as far as records, as far as hit record sales and, and impact at a specific time, Vanilla Ice is one of the greatest ever. I'm not going with that. Okay. This is the thing. When you talk about greatest, when you talk about greatest, you gotta be specific you're what you're talking about. You gotta be you gotta be specific what you're talking about. Like if you're talking about MCs, just Rhyme skills alone, um, catalog of your music alone. Okay, yeah, Vanilla Ice is is basic as fuck. But when I think of greatest, I don't think of just like the dopest rapper ever. I think you got to include success as well. Like, I like mean, for as example, as pop, like, like as a pop rapper, he's he's had to, probably the one. Let of, me ask you this: who, most influential. who who do you think is iller, Ill Bill or Eminem? Um, I might have to go with with Ill Bill because of his his. Passion. Okay, but you know, what I'm saying. But would you say he's greater than Eminem? I don't know. I, I don't know. That's 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 an arguable. That's an arguable point. I wouldn't say he's but been other he's people greater who, than Eminem because his his success hasn't reached the the level of Eminem. Well, commercially, no. If you say specifically commercially, no. But what I but whose catalog as, would I rather <laughs> listen to? 
Ill Bills or M and M's? I would rather listen to Ill Bills any day of the week over M and M's catalog. I I can get that. I can I can ride with that because his M and M's hasn't aged well when you come to the jokey jokey tracks. But let's run I don't down think it even ages well now. Like this new right. album, it doesn't even age well now. And to me, like I just heard it today, and it's like it's already like uh, like the real tracks that I could roll with are like uh, Mockingbird, um, Venom, Till I Collapse. You talking about the Venom, the 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 movie soundtrack joint? Yeah, I hated uh, that. Rap God. Rap God was all right because I, I like I can't deny Rap God because what he did on it. But the beat still, I'm not big on the beat. Like those, man. Like I get it. It's it's not boom bapping. But no, it's not that like, it's not boom bap. It's not even that, man. It's just it's too basic for this so called complex rapper. I could roll with another one like Sing for the Moment. Even Superman, not afraid. I mean, Superman's all right. That's a, I like that record. But that's kind of still like early Slim Shady ish, like uh, the rhyme yeah. style and the and the rhyme pattern. Definitely, definitely. Uh, the way I am. And I didn't too much mind Eminem when he did the Royce the Five Nine album. But even then, if you listen to the album he did with Royce the Five Nine, Royce the Five Nine like outrapped him on every single song. As far as I'm concerned, Royce the Five Nine outrapped him on every single song on that Royce the Five Nine and Eminem's last album. Oh, I think that was arguable. That song he did with uh that the song he did with Logic, Logic killed him. Logic outrapped him. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know about Logic using the N word. I think somebody might need to might need to beat him up because I think that's still questionable. Logic look about white as me. I don't care what anybody say. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's what people gonna get on get on him for. But I mean, he Nathan, is black. nobody's <laughs> hating. Go to bed. Get your milk and cookies. Get your milk and cookies. Stop calling me a hater, man. Just because I don't like something don't mean I'm hating. That's the problem with you little kids, man. Y'all think everybody hating just because we don't like everything. You got to be liberal, man, to call me a hater just because I don't like something you like. <laughs> Come on. Got to be. Go to bed, man. Go get, get ready to uh, go to bed. Get your sleep like Sleepy Joe. Get your milk Come and cookies. On, man. Nah, man. <laughs> and you're not my only. You're not our only viewer, Nathan. We've been doing this for a long time, man. Now, that's uh, that, that so, must, that's must, must be your uh your, he, he your said, long lost oh, he son. Said, hold on. He said the guy with the red hat looks like Rod Wave's grandfather. <laughs> wow. That can't be me, cause Rob, unless Rob Wave's grandfather is a, a white dude. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said Eminem a little baby's music. Why would you? <sighs> Eminem, <laughs> facts, facts, facts. I like. Eminem. See, this is why I'm not a That's hater. Just, that must be your long lost son or something. This man. is why I'm not a hater. This must be my long lost son, right? He mad because you ain't you ain't give him no uh, no, child no child support. support. I, ain't, I ain't damn claimed him. Yo, okay, I don't hate. First of all, you can't spell Eminem. You must not be um from America. You must be from overseas. I don't hate. I like that's the thing. I'm not gonna deny Eminem to the point where I'm gonna say he can't rap better than Lil Baby. Like I'm not gonna go that far, you know. And we from North Carolina, we prefer Dub Baby over Little Baby. Um. But uh, yeah, Eminem over little over little baby. Definitely all day. Wow, um, we about to hit that hour mark. We about to wrap it up here, Jay. Anything else you want to say about this Eminem thing? I don't know. I, I got to dig deep, delve uh, a little bit more into it. But like I said, he wasn't just put up there by other people. He was put up there by rappers like you know Rock M. Like LL, you know what I'm saying? Some people with some real stature 
as far as lyrics, lyrics and lyricism go. So I mean, know. but I could totally get now. I totally get it now why some people feel the way they feel about like when they say Eminem is only there because he's white, because the music is just not adding up to the success like the last the second half of his music you know career is just not adding up to the pedestal that he gets put on man i think still he's a dope mc i think he's still one of the dopest out i think what happens is some of his antics don't age well and haven't aged it, well it's not that it's, annex it's, it's the production not, man it's, it's the production it's the production, well, yeah, man. It's some of the production too, because I can't get with some of the newer uh, production on some of the things, but some of it works. It's out. not that. It's you not know, that it's like it it's, and it's not that it's not boom bap. It's just it's not. It doesn't fit what we say about this guy. We say he's this complex rapper and syllables, this metaphors, that, but the beats be so basic, man. They be so so basic, man. Um, anything you want to shout out before we go, man? Yeah. Uh, shout out uh, Bruce Anderson. I'm supposed to be uh, interviewing on his show this coming Tuesday. You said who? Uh, Bruce Anderson. I'm supposed to be interviewing on his uh, show, on his platform uh, this coming Tuesday. So hopefully that, that, that goes off without a hitch. Of course. Uh, you know, we got the Empire. Um, we gearing up to uh, do a song for the Underground Experience soundtrack. Um, I'm waiting on the last finish up for BTS, and uh, of course, I'll be touching with bases with everybody who I've interviewed to go ahead and get a track done for the soundtrack and collab with everybody on it. So, shout out to everybody who's been involved and uh, who is going to be involved and what we doing i want to say shouts out to nathan uh robes robeson um appreciate you actually appreciate you tuning in and staying on here man it says hey never give up on this keep grinding keep posting streaming great stuff never comes easy oh yeah man i mean we've been doing this this podcast for about nine ten months now um clipping up content every single day we got music reviews tomorrow saturday 5 p.m eastern time if you make music or know somebody who makes music tell them to send it to us at live for vietnam at gmail.com um also uh i want y'all go check out the paul pickett podcast i just did three new interviews i did an interview with a female bare knuckle fighter out of the uk melanie shah i did a interview with edgar the dream killer plaziola who's upcoming um, 3-0 BKFC fighter. And I did uh, one with a guy who reached out. Second BKFC fighter has reached out to me about an interview. That's how I know I'm doing something right. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Dope. Second cat, um, Blaine, uh, what was it? Uh, War Britain, about to have his first fight in Kansas City BKFC coming up, um, I think, next month, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's uh, July is sometime in july, like july 26 i forgot the exact date but uh he's definitely a friend of the show that's my second uh bare knuckle cat that actually reached out to um ask for an interview you know i trying to brag but that didn't happen when i was doing some other bare knuckle podcast before <laughs> and uh we shout out to freddie freddie laps shout out to freddie laps i just did a, a um a blog interview uh, uh on him up I'll on send, we'll send that over so we can post that to our, our medium page as well and we got oh yeah tomorrow we got jay cobb on we're going to interview jay cobb who do we got next week next friday who we got next friday uh, let me see if i can pull up real quick who we got next friday we i mean we still got a, a few interviews uh lined up um we still got Ben Malik, uh, Barbara Miles. We still got uh, Rescheduled Punchline, Mr. Servon from No Limit. Uh, we got Kid Sensation, the 20th. We still got Minnesota. We got Drasmatic. Uh, that's who yeah, we got next week. next week. We got Drasmatic yeah. next week. And we still got Cooley High in August. And we still got Bishop Omega. We still got a lot of interviews lined up, man. Um, and we're going to keep 
pumping them out, man. Uh, all right, well, anything you want to shout out before we go? Not that's, that's about to be it. it. Appreciate like y'all said, tuning in. Check out, check out uh, the Empire Music dot com. Check them out. Music is up. Remember, every Friday, 7 p.m., Saturdays, 5 p.m. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Peace. We out. Beats, beats by Trill, straight killer, Ville, dog, 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 dog.